Why No One Noticed the Rapture by Ed Stevens Narrated by David Clark Why did no one notice the rapture? Fair question. And it is the same basic question that futurists ask all of us full preterists. If the parousia, resurrection and judgment really happened in the way those pre-70 saints were expecting, then why didn't anyone notice it and why didn't the remaining Christians afterwards claim it was fulfilled? This is not just a documentation problem for rapture preterists. It is a historical problem for all preterists. So, when we preterists point a finger and ask why no one noticed the rapture, keep in mind that we have three fingers pointed back at us. Why did no one notice the parousia? Resurrection and Judgment. Consider what Don Preston states about this. Stevens is correct to say that we have no patristic authors who point to 70 AD as the time of Christ's final coming, the judgment and resurrection of the dead. This silence is indeed perplexing, for which we have no easy answer. Now, how, in the name of reason, did they fail to see that the parousia had indeed occurred? Are we to suppose that the post-70 saints were so ignorant they could not see that connection? Quote, Don Preston, we shall meet him in the air. Preston sees the problem, but has no easy answer for it. All preterists face this challenge, but only some of us have an easy explanation for it, the rapture. The parousia was not documented because the saints, who were no longer on earth, to do so. However, the manner in which the rapture occurred, with no unbelievers noticing it, is not as easy to explain. So that is the purpose of this article. Since many Christians are unaware of the actual historical circumstances that existed at the time of the parousia, we need to examine those historical and geopolitical conditions which made it difficult for unbelievers to even suspect that a rapture might have occurred. As a result of Tim LaHaye's Left Behind Fiction, some fellow preterists have asserted, if there was a rapture of hundreds and thousands of bodies floating up into the air, leaving their clothes behind, then surely someone would have seen it and talked about it. That would be hard to miss. Indeed, that would have been hard to miss. However, that is not the kind of rapture the Bible describes. The Great Tribulation and the Great Apostasy were the two major end-time events with dramatic impact upon the number of the true faithful Christians living on earth at the time of the parousia. Ten years ago, fellow preterists who were critical of the rapture were claiming that there would have been hundreds of thousands of Christians left alive on earth at the time of the rapture. But I notice a reversal on that after. I published my first century events and final decade books and presented my historical podcast detailing the neuronic persecution and the great apostasy. Now those same critics agree that the vast majority of saints were either killed in the Great Tribulation or fell away in the Great Apostasy, so that there were not hundreds of thousands of true Christians left alive on earth at the time of the Parousia. However, the point that too many of us forget is that even though most of the pre-70 saints either died in the persecution or fell away back into paganism or Judaism, not all of them did there was still a significant number of elect saints living at the time of the parousia. Jesus promised that his elect would not all be killed or fall away before the parousia. The tribulation would be cut short for the sake of the elect. Matthew 24, 21-22 Apostle Paul told the Corinthians that we shall not all sleep, 1 Corinthians 15:51 and that some of the Thessalonians would live and remain until the parousia, 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-17. to 17. 
So there were not hundreds of thousands of saints left alive at the parousia, but there were some. And those saints who remained were certainly not killed at the parousia. Instead, Jesus and the apostles promised them that they would be relieved, rescued, vindicated and rewarded at the parousia. This means that if they were not taken out of the visible realm at the parousia, then they would have still been alive on the earth afterwards to at least mention the facts that they had experienced that relief and rescue, vindication and reward that had been promised. Yet for some strange reason, we hear nothing about any of them after AD 70. In fact, the first Christians we hear from afterwards, Papias, Polycarp, Ignatius, were teaching that the parousia was still future. Nor did they all fall away or get confused by the false teachers, Judaizers, Hellenizers, Gnostics and other heretics. A remnant of elect saints remained alive and faithful unto the very end. Paul even said that they would experience the arrival of the perfect after which they would know fully and understand all these things clearly as if face to face. 1 Corinthians 13.12 Note that one scholarly critic of preterism said about this in 1 Corinthians 13.12 Paul avers that the ignorance that he then experienced would be remedied when the perfect would come. His dim vision would then cease, he would then fully understand fully, even as if I have been fully understood. Where then is the perfection of knowledge that Paul so earnestly expected? How paradoxically it is that the very generation which attained consummate fullness of knowledge, even the perfect came, saw that knowledge evaporate virtually overnight, about AD 70. The irony is astonishing. This darkness of understanding struck the church according to full preterism, concurrently with the church's attainment to its ultimate state of perfection. It does not seem to me that one can have it both ways. If one wants to argue for a radical nosedive of the church as soon as the apostles left the scene somewhere around AD 70, then I do not see how one can argue that it was precisely then that the church also attained the consummation of its hope. Its full measure of knowledge and sanctification, which was its final state of conformity to the image of Christ, see Charles E. Hill, eschatology in the wake of Jerusalem's fall, chapter in Keith A. Matheson's multi-authored book, When Shall These Things Be?, a Reformation Response to Hyperpreterism, Phillipsburg, New Jersey, USA. Where was the fullness of knowledge and the face-to-face -face clarity of understanding after AD 70? Do you catch the irony of that? They could not have been left in the dark, ignorant and confused about what had just happened. The perfect had arrived. They should have had the fullness of knowledge and complete understanding that was promised. So there is no excuse for their silence and confusion about the fulfilments if they were still alive on earth after the parousia. Therefore, the neuronic persecution, great tribulation, and its associated great apostasy is not an adequate explanation for the silence and confusion of Christians after 70 AD. There were some survivors of that persecution and apostasy who had experienced the parousia and received the fullness of knowledge and the perfection of their understanding and who would have been able to bear witness to all of this if they were still around afterward. The rapture easily explains why they never reappeared after 70 AD to proclaim the fulfilment. They indeed received the perfection, but they were not on earth when they received it. They were in the unseen realm. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 52, Paul says that at the same moment, blink of an eye, 
when the conscious disembodied souls of the dead were raised out of Hades in the unseen realm, the living saints were changed from mortal to immortal. This bodily change of the living saints took place out of the visible realm, similar to how Enoch disappeared when God took him into heaven, into the unseen realm. He did not float up into the sky. Those living saints were no longer in the visible realm after they were changed. The bodily change removed them from the seen realm first, and then they were caught up together with the resurrected dead saints to remain with Christ forever, afterwards in the unseen realm. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17-18 They were not caught up with the resurrected saints till after they were changed and put into the unseen realm. So the catching up occurred in the unseen realm. Thus, no bodies were seen floating up into the air in the visible realm. Furthermore, when Enoch was snatched away into the unseen realm, his clothes went with him. When Elijah was caught up by the angelic chariot, only his mantle was thrown down for Elisha. The rest of his clothes went with him. When Samuel appeared to the necromancer, he had his robe on. When Jesus was transfigured with Moses and Elijah, all three of them apparently had their clothes on. When Jesus ascended, he kept his clothes on, and that proves a biblical precedent for all the living saints to keep their clothes on when their bodies were changed. Evidently, their clothes were changed right along with their bodies. Neither their bodies nor their clothes were left behind. Both were changed and taken into the unseen realm. However, it is still very reasonable to think that someone might have noticed one of the Christians disappear when their bodies were changed, or at least noticed their absence afterwards. How do we account for that? We moderns simply do not understand what life was like, what life was like for those pre-70 saints during the neuronic persecution. Consequently, we impose our socio-politico-cultural situation back into their times, thinking that they lived under conditions similar to ours today. We claim to interpret scripture from an audience relevance hermeneutic, but in this case we have not considered the actual historical situation of the first century saints. The place to start in our recovery of a first century perspective is with neuronic persecution. That was the key factor in their lives just prior to the parousia. Knowing how the persecution affected them will help us understand why no one noticed the rapture when it occurred. On July 19, AD 64, Nero ordered some of his ruffians to set fire to several of the neighbourhoods in the section of Rome where he wanted to build his golden palace. The fire burned for six days and then broke out again and burned another three days. Of the 14 sections of the city, only four remained intact after the fire. Tacitus, Annuals, 1544. Many lives and much property were lost. Most of the precious antiques and national treasuries were destroyed. Numerous prominent figures pointed the finger at Nero and his throne was at stake. Someone who was obviously an enemy of Christianity, motive, and who had significant influence with Nero, opportunity, suggested that the blame be placed on the Christians. That unleashed a holocaust upon Christianity, the terror of which has never been seen before or since. Countless thousands died in Rome, but the carnage did not stop there. Orazzo Marucci, Manual of Christian Archaeology, page 29, found evidence that the persecution extended throughout the length and breadth of the empire. Philip Schaeff, History of the Christian Church. Likewise, cited numerous ancient and modern historians 
who believed it was much broader in scope than just Rome and Italy. For the details, see my book Final Decade Before the End. This was the Great Tribulation, about which Jesus had warned the church almost 40 years earlier, Matthew 24, 21, 31. The persecution began in the late summer or early fall of AD 64 and continued until the Jewish Zealot Rebellion broke out in the spring of AD 66. When the war broke out in AD 66, both Jews and Romans turned their attention to the war effort, thus cutting short the Great Tribulation against the Church. The Neuronic Persecution broke out suddenly. The Neuronic Persecution broke out suddenly. The Neuronic Persecution broke out suddenly, with such fury that there was little opportunity to flee. Entire Christian communities all over Palestine and throughout the Roman world were devastated. Only a few of the elect managed to escape the notice of the Jewish informers and the Roman executioners. It was during this persecution and time of political turmoil that the parousia began and the rapture occurred. The situation was very much like that of the Jews in Nazi Germany during World War II. Entire Jewish neighbourhoods disappeared overnight. No one knew what happened to them. Did they flee the country? Or were they arrested in the night and taken away to be killed? No one knew for sure until years later when some of them resurfaced in foreign countries to tell of their story. But no one thought they were raptured and no one dared to go down to the local Gestapo to inquire about them for fear of being arrested on suspicion or either being Jewish or aiding the Jews. It was not safe to say anything about it so they just zipped their lips. During the Neuronic Persecution, Christians were routinely disappearing, so the non-Christians would not have thought it was strange, nor would they have gone to the local Jewish or Roman authorities to inquire about it for fear of being arrested under suspicion themselves. They were not associating with the Christians, nor living in the same quarters of the city with them. If they even noticed the absence of the Christians, they would not have thought they were raptured. The idea of a rapture would never have crossed their mind. They did not know there was supposed to be a rapture. They would only have thought that the Christians either fled in the night or were rounded up and killed by the Jewish and Roman authorities. And since those pre-70 saints never resurfaced again after the destruction of Jerusalem, it appears that they had all been killed in the persecution. Thus, since most of the Christians were either killed in the Great Tribulation or fell away in the Great Apostasy, there, would not, there were not many of them remaining by the time of the Parousia, and the few that did remain were hiding from the Jewish and Roman authorities. They were not out in the open where their disappearance could be seen. That is why their bodily change and rapture was not noticed by the unbelievers. If you'd like more details about any of this, there are several resources available. One, my first century history book, Final Decay Before the End. Two, my rapture book, Expectations Demand a First Century Rapture. And three, my free nine-page PDF article entitled why no one noticed the rapture. The two books can be ordered from the website at preterist.org and the free PDF article can be obtained by email request preterist1, that's numerical1, at preterist.org.